This video will focus on narrative writing with the use of two sources. I know that some students have been having some difficulty incorporating or using sources into their narratives. So again, a narrative is a fictional story that you create that is based on sources. You don't cite the source, you just incorporate what you learn into your story. These sources that I'm going to look at right now are on the fall of the Roman Empire. So it's very similar to what you guys are doing. Now, the only difference with your stories is that you found the sources um, or I provided some sources for you. But for the most part, it's been kind of like you found your own sources. These sources uh, we went over in class a couple weeks ago. Uh, the first is source F. And it's talking about the Roman Empire being um, powerful, great wealth. It was a great time, right? Roman peace. Rome was the clear dog, uh, top dog in the Western world. But as Rome discovered, its, its size had its problems. The empire acquired new people that were not Roman, who often did not want to be Roman uh, in France and England and beyond the Danube River. Uh, controlling an empire, this empire meant a larger army, which in turn meant more food and weapons, right? By the 5th century, when the city was attacked by the outside invaders, Rome had been badly weakened by a number of problems. Part of the empire would survive. So I'm not going to incorporate every aspect of this into my narrative, but I would try to incorporate parts of it. And then I have this excerpt about um, the primary source, and it's focusing on Roman perspective of the Huns. Um, they're saying how the Huns are never sheltered. They're, they're always outside. They wander freely in the mountains and the woods, learning from their earliest childhood to tolerate freezing cold, hunger, and thirst. They say that, Ro that the Huns are not well adapted to, to battling on foot. Instead, they are glued onto their horses, which are ugly, like refugees, all without permanent settlement, home, law, or fixed way. Of life, they are always on the move with their wagons, which are which which they leave. Like unthinking animals, they are completely ignorant of the differences between right and wrong, with an overwhelming desire to taking property of others. Fast moving. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a story that incorporates these two sources into my story. I won't uh, create a story that is so outlandish or so unbelievable that it, it, go, it moves away from these sources, right? It needs to be based on these sources, but the characters that I'm going to develop are fictional, right? They are not real, but they are still kind of based on the experiences that these sources provide. So I'm going to start with my title. So your story should have a title. I called it my land no more. It could be different. That's the one I picked. Um, and it starts with, again, the story is fictional, right? But I want you to look at how I incorporate or how I use the sources into my story. I also want you to look at how I use dialogue. Uh, dialogue means like people talking, like right here. Uh, and I, how I close the dialogue. And I also want you to look at how I use, um, how I try to use vivid language. That means that's. Uh, language that describes a setting, language that describes the feelings of the people. I try not to use, he was sad or he was angry. Instead, I try to show you how they were sad or angry. Uh, here we go. Dad woke up early in the morning and prepared to go to the market. Okay, so the setting is, so we already know that there's going to be a dad involved. There's going to be a market involved. Uh, it sounds like it's the morning. So here I'm getting a visual of what uh, the setting is and also the characters, okay? So this is going to be my exposition where I'm able to introduce the characters and the setting. Again, my exposition is where I introduce the settings and the characters. Uh, here you go. Dad woke up early in the morning and prepared to go to the market. I'll be back before lunch, he said to mom. So here we see a character speaking. He's talking, the dad is talking to the mom, apparently. 
Uh, this is first person because I do say dad woke up early in the morning, pretty good lunch. Uh, so it sounds like it's from the perspective of, of, of one person. Dad was strong. His muscles. His muscles. So here I tell you that he's strong. But then I also describe. I, can't, I, I don't just say he's strong. I actually tell you or show you how he's strong. His muscles clearly visible as he maneuvered the large bags of potatoes in the, in the, into the cart. I hope that when I'm older, I can be just as strong as he is. He tells me that I'm his favorite. Favorite son, funny, how, means how I am his only son. So from here, we are able to see that there's the dad, there's the mom. Sounds like they live together. And then there's a young boy, right? Because it's the son of the dad. At the market, dad exchanges the potatoes for other foods, such as cabbage, olive oil, tomatoes, vinegar, honey. And if we get lucky, fish and other meats. Life has been difficult for some time now. Trade has increased as a result of invasion. So here you're able to see that I kind of incorporated the, the sources already. I started incorporating the sources, right? Um, where things are, are a little more problematic. And also including these guys, maybe. Okay, we, we don't really see it as much yet, but we're trying. We're already kind of seeing the situ what's happening, the situation. Um. Let's hope for our fr let's hope our friend Augustus is, is there today. Dad said. Augustus is the fisherman who we rely on for the fish that we, he can't sell on the previous day, so it sounds like, sounds like this family is, uh, maybe they grow to, uh, potatoes and other vegetables and they sell them, they sell the the vegetables to people in exchange for things, uh, that they that they can't have that they can't grow or get a hold of, immediately, and and sounds like. Uh, meat is something that they don't really get that often. And then our, it says, our home is located a several, I, I have a typo there. It should say our home is located several hours, a several, well, I guess. Our home is located a several hour trip on horseback from the capital city of Rome. So here we get more of the setting, right? Um, it sounds like they live at least several miles maybe some distance from the capital city because it says um, several, it takes several hours to get from their house to the capital city of Rome. We like it best this way. The capital city has become a dangerous place. The government can no longer keep the city safe. Invasions are common. I hate these barbarians, I think, to myself. So here we're starting to see more of the issues, right, uh, of how there's more disorder. I will say trip, my love, mom says as she kisses dad's forehead. He has done this trip for a year now, but it never gets easy seeing him go. The empire is crumbling and the military can no longer guarantee safe passage. It wasn't always like this. The military used to be strong. Those who there challenged it were quickly, were, uh, challenge it were met with a quick death. That is no longer the case. Our empire grew too large and the military has not been able to cover and protect its borders. What a shame this is. So here I'm able to show you more of the, of this source, right? How the empire does not, it's not able to protect uh, its, its size. And it's because of its size, the empire is not able to protect anymore. The military is not able to protect it. And then we get, so I gave you guys the introduction, the exposition. Now I'm going to give you guys I kind of prepped you for the conflict, right? I'm kind of setting it up. Like, the conflict's coming, and you know it's coming, right? Uh, but I haven't given it to you yet. But you kind of you kind of can predict what's the conflict going to be like. Get up, Mom yells at the top of her lungs. Run, she continues. I quickly toss the blanket off, off and run towards the door to open it slightly. There I see my fellow Romans being dragged by wild horsemen. The end of the world seems to be coming to an end. The end of the world seems to be coming to an end. As you say, the... The world, right? The world. So I'll change that. The world seems to be coming to an end. How has my dear land become such a disaster? Why was this happening? Were, were we not the most incredible and powerful land in the world? So here I see that you start to see the conflict, right? The inv there's an invasion, apparently. What are you doing? Dad asks ferociously as he yanks me away from the door. Do you want to get us killed? His eyes fill with... Filled with both anger and fear, he slams the door shut and asks me to help him move the bed to block the entrance. Push, 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 he said. 
he says, because I, it's, I, I should be doing it in present tense, right? I, I can't go back and forth. He says, I had heard about these Vikings. Dad and Mom had mentioned them to us. They came from the north, unthinking animals, they called them. We must hide from these savages. So this one, I made a, a mistake here. Uh, because this is talking about the Hans, right? So my mistake here, I said the Vikings, right? I heard about these Hans. Uh, because we are have been talking about the Vikings, that's why I made that mistake. Okay? I heard about these Hans. Dad and Mom had mentioned them to us. They come from the north. Unthinking animals, they call them. So here, I used a direct quote. Or I used a direct, uh, uh, something that was really, really, uh, um, really meaningful in my story. Because it kind of shows you what they think of them. Unthinking animals, they call them. We must hide from these savages, that says to me. They will kill me and take you all as slaves. So here I gave you guys the conflict, right? So now we're going to have the rising action. Without warning, before we can block the entrance, several massive forces kick in the door, right? So now we have the rising action. The wood splinters in thousands of, into, in a thousand pieces. We are trapped. I can I can see the outside again. Fires are raging everywhere. Father runs towards the door and was quickly cut down by the savages. This is the climax when the dad gets killed. The massive blow nearly cuts him in half. Dad's body hits the floor with a thump. Blood splashes in the savages, the savage and the hideous beast he's riding. This is this inhumane, this inhumane savage smiles, enjoying the sight of death. He quickly speaks a foreign language that I do not understand. That I do, that I do not understand. Again, I made that mistake. I kept going back and forth between past and present tense. And you need to stay consistent, either past or present, but not both. Father, I, so now we are, that. this is going to be the climax. And now we're going to do the falling action. This story is pretty short. So everything happens fairly, fairly quickly, right? Father, I can hear myself call, but the words will not come out. My body feels numb. This is the end. I'm in a daze. Is this a nightmare? Why suddenly wake up and realize that I'm safe in my bed, waiting for mom to wake me? This is the falling action, right? Out of the corner of my eye, still falling in action, I see my mother shackled and dragged. Her clothes are tattered and dirty. She avoids my eyes. There's nothing to do. And then we have the resolution. The mighty Roman military will not come save us. They, like us, have become slaves to this new master. So here we have a complete story, right? There's things that I could have changed, and I, and I will change them once I go back and read the story. So once you guys see this story, you'll be able to see that I've made those changes. Uh, but this is a type of story that you should be writing, right? Um, when you do your interim, you will get three sources. You will write a story, and it's going to be based on those sources. The people in your story are going to be fictional, similar to the ones I have here, right? But the conflict is most likely it's going to be based on something that you read. My conflict here is not that I lost a shoe or that a rock hit me in the head. It, it could have, but it wouldn't be logical to have a, a conflict because these are the sources that I'm working with, right? I, my, my conflict can't be that my friend came over and gave me a present and I lost it because that is not logical based on the sources that I have. So let's go back and look at the checklist that I have. So this is going to be the outline, the rubric that I'm going to use. Okay. So let's see if I did some of these. I have a strong exposition. So I think that I do have a pretty strong exposition. Um, I think I spent quite a bit of time with the exposition. I have a rising action that details the conflict. Okay. Yes, I have rising action. So I talk about the, the invaders, the Huns. And it's the longest part of my narrative. I have a climax that is the most exciting part. Yes, the dad getting chopped down. Um, if my story was longer, I would have a better climax, I think. I have a falling action that focuses on how conflicts are resolved. I have a falling action. Yes, it's pretty short. I do have a resolution to my story that they get taken, right? They are taken. 
um, and, and most likely going to be slaves. I have multiple examples of dialogue. Um, I could have done that better. I think that I could have done a better job with having more talking amongst the characters. Uh, but I have quite a bit. But I think that if I could change something, I would ch definitely change that. I have a I have a wide variety of vocabulary that engages the reader. Um, I could have done a better job with that too, but I, I did it. I have made sure to be historically accurate. I definitely try to focus on that. I checked my grammar. This is uh, something that I definitely need to work on. There are several mistakes that I had, either tense, past versus present. I had a couple of typos. Um, my essay is single space. Yes, I've used the uh, space. I've spaced out the pa the paragraphs. I've self-assessed myself during the using the rubric. I haven't done that, so I probably should. I have an exposition. I think my exposition is pretty good. Um, I think that the events that build off one another, I think they're pretty good, but I think they could be better, uh, especially because they're kind of on the short side. My ending resolves the conflict. Definitely, I definitely do that. I feel like, you know, there's a conflict. They're being attacked. The dad dies. Uh, and they they end up, the dad end up dying. That's part of the resolution. But also they keep, they, they, they're taken away. Um, and I, I definitely use dialogue techniques. Um, you kind of, you definitely know what's going on from one to the next step. Um, I don't have an issue with this. First word, the sentence capitalized. Sentence ends with appropriate end marks. No run-ons. Um, this is kind of the same thing. This is the same thing here. Okay. Uh, I've self-assessed, so I did that. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my work. I think that I could do better. So I'm going to go back and look at this and look at my essay and then I'm gonna come back and self-assess. So I'm gonna, these are the two things that I need to work on. I'm proud of my work and I, I checked my grammar and poetry multiple times, okay? Uh, if I was grading this, this I'd probably give it an S plus um, because there, I, I think I could have done better. I think I could have added more detail to the story. Um, I think that things happen pretty quickly and yeah, this is what this is what I want you guys to, to do. Um, read your stories, go back to it. Don't I've seen some of your your stories and some of you have just one big paragraph. You have to break it down into sections. For example, anytime that someone talks, I try to have it uh, be here, like towards the be on its own. Now I try not to do, do it in the in in the middle because it kind of gets lost there. Okay, so I try to do it on it so it stands kind of on its own. Okay, uh, you might see it in other spaces, but I do try to just keep it there. Okay, um, your essay is due at the end of Tuesday. On Wednesday, we're gonna give each other feedback. You'll be assigned a student to give feedback to. Everybody will have one. And then uh, the rest of the week, we're going to be working on feudalism to, um, to begin our assessment. Uh, you do have questions on this. You need to get a uh, seven year higher. I will be checking in with a couple of you while you take this, um, while you work on this video.